Welcome, Block Buddies. This is Block Content, and we're talking with our good friend Tom today. Hey, Tom. Hey, guys. So we're discussing the very awesome appearance of the Nintendo Switch that was on Jimmy Fallon a few days ago, and we still can't believe what we saw, right, Tom? What did you think of the initial reveal of the Switch live for the first time? I thought it was very cool, and this time it wasn't some some orchestrated trailer. And this time it was real, and it was I, it was very cool, man. Oh man, I, I just can't believe what we saw because I th I thought you know the major reveal would be Super Mario Run, and they even revealed some cool stuff about that game, meaning that you can even play as Luigi, you can play as Yoshi for the first time in a side-scrolling Mario game, you can play as Toad, and not just Blue Toad or Yellow Toad, but you can play as you know the Toad, but. The, the major thing was that there was this box, you know, this question mark box on the table the whole time. What did you think was inside that thing? I actually, to be honest, uh, I was spoiled for the video, so I think I was, I knew what was coming. But if I wouldn't have known, I wouldn't have seen it probably. And I would have just thought it would have been a Super Mario Run video, which oh, also right. was very exciting. Yeah, because they didn't really uh, show the trailer right there, but the trailer uh, got online after it, which showed a lot of new uh, information about the game. So I thought, yeah, this you know this whole question mark block could maybe be a prop that's not even used. And then they lifted it up, and it was the switch. And ah, oh, man, I, I I just can't believe it. So what did you think? You know, how does the console look to you? Does it look cheap, or does it look you know as big as you expected? What did you think of the reveal? Actually. The first thing I thought when I saw the Switch, also on the trailer, but this time really in the on the video for, for Jimmy Fallon, was that it was super thin, man. And it, and it was crazy thin. I was surprised that the whole console isn't a thing. Yeah, it feels like uh, this is, you know, and I can't really say it because people will hate me for it, but it feels like a tablet when you look at it, right? It feels like an iPad kind of thing. But more geared towards like a, a you know elongated like like a horizontal screen, um, but it feels like that thin sort of Apple kind of design. Did you get an Apple vibe from this thing? Yeah, because because it was so thin and so streamlined, but it does have this Nintendo console vibe on it as well, uh, from what I recognize from let's say the 3DS and the Wii U tablet co uh, controller. Um, but the thing that, that made me really happy was seeing that it was so thin, but also seeing the, the gameplay of Zelda on it. Yeah, that was just insane. To me, um, seeing that you know controller for the first time, it was like, well, are we just going to see the console or are we going to see it in action? And like you said, they, they did show off a little something. But we've, before we get into any of the footage, right, um, there's so much to discuss about the console itself and the controller, um, namely to me, I think it's very interesting that we see the actual sticks of the controller and they're, they're not just circle pads. So to me, some things about the design from the trailer have kind of been changed. And um, do, you, do you like the layout, how it's looking right now? Because I, I kind of think it's sort of close to what a pro controller of the Wii was like. I think you have one of those, right? Yes, I do. The, 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 one of the things I've always been a bit, um, uh, thought was a bit strange was that the Wii U controller layout had the two sticks at the top which was unique because the PS4 controller has them both at the bottom and the Xbox controllers all have them uh, like diagonal where they could write a button on, on the right and it could stick on the on down on the right and the stick up on the on the left side. And yeah. this time they did the kind of the Xbox layout and I think I like that because the second stick should be a secondary thing as opposed to the buttons on the right side. Yeah, exactly, because I think that um, the stick on the right you'll use, of course, I think the most, right? I mean, it's your walking, it's it's basically your basic movement in just about any game you can think of. Um, but also what I really like about the design is that it has this diagonal design that kind of feels like a yin-yang sort of design, even if you look at the logo, right? I mean, the logo of the Switch is exactly those two sticks, um, uh, you know, represented in this small sort of icon. And one side is white and one side is black, or, you know, one side is one color one side is the other and it kind of feels like a yin yang sort of you know there is balance there so to me one of the design philosophies seems to be that the switch has to be somehow balanced or something what do you think about that maybe it's weird to say but maybe this is nintendo's way of seeking some redemption yeah exactly that's what i thought as well it's very cool that you say that because um, after the wii u you know the wii u wasn't the, the big hit that they hoped that it would be and 
I, I always wished for Nintendo to have this giant console that just blows up. And you know, the Wii kind of was that, the Wii was immensely successful. But after you have something like the Wii U fail that hard, you know, and the game's just not selling, the console's just not selling after its initial launch, you need that one big thing. And if we can go off Jimmy Fallon's reaction, right? I think this is the big thing that we're waiting for. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna get it for sure. The one thing that I am a bit um, wondrous about is that the Switch does feel a bit like the Wii U, but um, more thought out, I guess, and uh, more of a streamlined concept. What do you think about that, Callum? Yeah, I, I sort of agree, I guess. I think that the Wii U, maybe, maybe this has always been the plan from the start, and with the Wii U, they just didn't get it right the first time. Um, because it seems to me that if you're gonna make a game uh, console that you can also play on a tablet screen or something like that, I think that the idea should always be to take it anywhere you go. That's the first thing you think about. And I think that's the first thing that Wii U owners did was just walk and see how far they could still have the image, right? And it's so weird to think about that they put a console out that was basically that idea, but it didn't. It's it's kind of like the the Mario Maker for 3DS. You know what I mean? Yeah, kind of uh, uh, improving on the concept, I guess. In yeah, a way. you're bringing out a new game, right? Mario Maker for 3DS, but you leave out this one component that is so crucial. And with Mario Maker, that was online play. That made that whole thing awesome, like sharing your levels with the world and playing any level from the world. And with the Wii U, it was kind of the same thing. It was like, you have this amazing console, you can play games in your hand, you can play them on the screen, but you can't take them anywhere. I mean, what's what's really, what's the point, right? No, I agree. I, talking about Super Mario Maker, I remember you and I sharing our levels with each other and uh, uh, showing, us, uh, showing each other the levels we uh, both made uh, individually. And that was so much fun. And I think with the Switch, uh, we're gonna have something well, similar where Maybe I would go to your place and we will play some, some Switch games together or we will be somewhere on a, on a road trip and uh, one of us will take our Switch and we can play together again. Uh, I think that's something very exciting, something we also saw in the Super Mario Run um, part of the video. Exactly, yeah. Super Mario Run also seems to be a bit more of a multiplayer experience than we expected, right? And I think that's what Nintendo does so well. It's, it's introducing this concept that seems very simple, right? Like, like the Switch as well, it's like introducing this thing, well, it's a screen, uh, it's also a home console, it's also a handheld, but once you get into the details of it, it's so exciting, you know, having those Joy-Cons on the side that you can, you, you can flip off and you can play games with these tiny controllers, those kinds of ideas, and I think Jimmy Fallon even called it, it's like three consoles in one, you know, he was like, he was crazy about that whole idea. Um, so, what did you think about the little bit of footage, actually, that we saw from Breath of the Wild? There was some new stuff there. Oh man, it, it, it looks exciting. I mean, um, I, I, I didn't uh, uh, watch a lot of gameplays uh, yet on purpose. Uh, yeah, I, did, I know though, that. <laughs> from, yeah, I did watch some things and it looked to be uh, very improved because, uh, like in the beginning, my, my biggest remark was that um, it felt a bit empty, the world, uh, kind of. And now with this footage, I already saw more uh, livelihood in the in the world there. Yeah, it's amazing. I think that if you've not watched all that much footage to kind of save yourself, I think you've missed out on a lot. I, there was actually a recent trailer that came out where you can actually see towns and villages in Zelda. Have you seen that one? Oh man, no way. Oh man, I gotta send you that very quickly. Yes. Well, I, I I don't know. If you don't want to get spoiled too much, that might spoil something. So um, keep an open mind. But anyway, um, the footage that we saw in this initial uh, Switch video from Jimmy Fallon was very cool because Link was wearing this very cool new outfit in green and red, and he seemed to have a bow that was like sort of like the hero's bow from from the original games. Um, and I thought it was just so cool that they quickly showed off. You know, you can kill enemies in many ways. You can like sneak up on them. I even know from playing the game actually at a press event that you can sneak behind enemies and then you can do sort of a silent takedown, kind of like Metal Gear Solid. What you do basically is you walk behind a Bokoblin and it will prompt if you do it correctly and he doesn't notice you and you're right behind him. It's, it shows a prompt that you press A or you press B and then you like stab him slowly and then he just falls, you know, silently down. 
Um, and they even showed an approach where you can just, you know, push a boulder down <laughs> and just crush those enemies with a big explosion from, you know, different barrels. And I thought that, you know, you sh you're showing this footage to a mainstream audience. And I thought this was the right way to go, by just showing a little bit of footage, but just enough. And then, of course, the magic moment happened when they took the Switch out of the dock and then they played um, without the screen. They played on the handheld device. What did you think of that sort of reveal for the first time? That was uh, that was also very cool, man. I mean, uh, like you were saying, they had to, sh to, to, to bring something to the mainstream audience. Uh, I'm sure the mainstream audience was already thinking that Nintendo was dead, probably. Yeah. Uh, uh, after the absence from the Wii, the Wii times, uh, and I think this was a very good showing because they showed the uh, the accessible game on the iPhone, which everyone can just get, uh, and then they showed the new, the big new thing from Nintendo, um, and I think they did it correctly. And um, the one thing that a lot of people were happy about, I saw on the internet was the, the how smooth i already said it but how smooth the gameplay looked on playing it on on, on, on the go and how smooth the frame rate was as well even with explosions all on the screen yeah exactly i think that too uh, i think there's been a lot of uh, discussion about the frame rate you know people are saying you know it was 60 frames per second i could feel it <laughs> even though the footage is not shot in 60 frames and i think someone even found 60 frames per second footage of this show um, which wouldn't be all that hard because I think it's shot with the best cameras in the business, you know. Um, right. But uh, to me, um, it, that showed footage that had clear, you know, uh, double frames, which probably means that it's 30 frames per second on the handheld screen and probably 60 on the big screen, which wouldn't be a big loss, right? I mean, 30 frames per second, if it's steady, that is amazing, right? As, as long as it's smooth and steady, uh, I've read online that the Wii U version has trouble with explosions on the screen yep um, i've heard and um i didn't see that on the, the switch tablet mode for things so that made me very happy yeah i think that there's a lot to look forward to with this uh, whole switch thing and i'm i'm very happy that you're so excited about this as i am because uh yeah it's 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 just the switch news coming in every single day it, it's making me so it's kind of like christmas every single day right with a little bit of switch news it would have been even more Christmassy, Callum, if the Switch came out this month. But okay, uh, let's yeah, wait for March. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll wait for March, right? And maybe there's some sort of press event that we might be going to in January. I don't know. Something like that, maybe? Man, that sounds exciting. And the one thing I would still want to say about the video was I love the way Miyamoto uh, kind of disapproved and then approved uh, yeah. a, a Mr. Fallon's gameplay. <laughs> I, I love that as well. I think Miyamoto is like... Now he's becoming sort of the mascot of Nintendo, uh, which is pretty weird because he's like the master of everything. Um, but I like I like his personality so much, and I think he understands English perfectly. He can speak it perfectly, um, so he was he was definitely uh, aware of everything that was going on. And I, 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 I saw an edit of that video where where they reversed it, <laughs> and they and they made it black and white as soon as his thumb went down. So it started up and smiling, and everyone's laughing, and then suddenly all those smiles disappeared, and his thumb slowly went down, and then the screen turned black and white. I mean, I'm gonna send that to people if they're saying i'm not excited for the switch i'll just send that <laughs> thumb going down <laughs> i want to see that man i'll send it to you and i'll send you cool. the the zelda video as well because you you, you just got to see that there's towns there's non-playable characters there's people in the villages it is incredible and there might even be a little hint of some zelda in there as well i don't know man man show it to me show it to me oh uh, man there's so much to look forward to guys i want to thank you all so much for watching this was block content and as you know our special guest tom here also has some very cool programs here on Block Content, including Tasting with Tom, Testing with Tom, and a lot more. So check out Block Content videos for more Tom content. <laughs> block Tom tent? Anyway. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Tom, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Callum, and bye, Block Buddies. See you later, Block Buddies. And remember, for more Switch news, stick it here to Block Content. And remember that you can always click that beautiful subscribe button to hear Tom's lovely voice. Mm. And my lovely voice. Mm. <laughs> See you guys later.